Well, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, um, here we are at the end of my term of office as president. What a, a year. I will soon have the pleasure of officially passing on the responsibility and the indisputable honour of presidency of the RTGI to Stephen Wilkinson, who so richly deserves the mantle and who I know will relish the opportunity to further promote the Institute, planning as a profession and planners who work tirelessly to make a, a positive difference for communities and people. But before doing so, I want to reflect on my year as President to share with you my experiences and thoughts and to underline, by example, the extremely valuable role that the planning profession undertakes uh, across the UK, uh, the nations and the regions, and also globally. I will start with the staff of the RTPI, whose professionalism and dedication has supported me throughout the year. To name a few individuals would be at the expense of others, uh, so I shall limit my thanks to Trudy Elliott, our Chief Executive, for her leadership. She has the enviable quality of being able to engage with senior ministers, government officials and grassroots contributors at all levels with equal commitment and civility which is a real quality. I've sat next to her on two separate long-haul flights to Phoenix and to Quito, some 23,000 miles. And uh, during that time, you, you get to know someone over that period. <laughs> <laughs> the way she sleeps, food she eats, <laughs> what she said in the sleep. <laughs> she is a professional colleague and a friend. Truly, thank you. I've also been very impressed with the National Directors of Wales, Scotland and Ireland and the Regional Coordinators who are the backbone of the RTPI working across the UK. Between their significant contribution and those within the RTPI branches, they demonstrate commitment and enthusiasm for planning. It's only when you experience that contribution firsthand in presidential visits do you appreciate what they do. So let me have some self-indulgence for a few moments and share with you my year. It's been a truly amazing and unforgettable time, a year which has exceeded my expectations and I believe has made me a better planner and a better person. Hopefully this will work. The first photo, my first official visit was to Budapest where at the Hungarian Urban Knowledge Centre, the Planning Horizons paper, Thinking Spatially, was launched in Hungary. Testimony, I believe, to the high esteem that the work of the RTPI is held in internationally. In this photograph, uh, I am welcomed by the President of the Hungarian Planning Institute. My first visit, a UK visit, required me stepping out of my city hall office in Belfast and walking about 400 yards, <laughs> no, no jet lag there, uh, to meet the DOE Permanent Secretary, followed by meetings with the RTPI Northern Ireland members and Queen's University students. The visit concluded with a meeting with the Environment Minister in Derry. Travelling to the West Midlands, and I'm, I'm giving some examples here, and I know in doing so, I'm falling into the, the potential trap of not recognising or naming every region uh, and, and nations, but uh, each place that I went to, I'll, I'll demonstrate, has been uh, particularly kind and uh, welcoming to me. But travelling to the West Midlands in March gave me the opportunity to see firsthand the valuable contribution planners have made to regeneration in Dudley Town Centre, as well as calling into the Birmingham City University Partnership Board meeting. Evidence, I think, of collaborative working between academia public private sectors. Meeting university students demonstrated that the future of planning is in good hands. The next generation of planners was a recurring theme throughout my visits across all nations and regions, including, as was mentioned earlier today, celebrating the World Town Planning Day with Ulster University students. My international visits to the APA in Arizona, to Brisbane, to Auckland and to Quito were memorable, not least because of the palpable energy and enthusiasm planners across the globe have 
in seeking to make better places for urban and rural communities. The respect that the RTPI has internationally is self-evident and something that I had envisaged but not expected to the degree that I experienced. Habitat the conference in Quito included the launch of the UK Built Environment Advisory Group, again something we referred to earlier today, which showed how the RTPI and other professional institutes can support emerging nations in com combating significant challenges caused by, for example, earthquakes and climate change. Whilst the UK has significant challenges itself regarding, for example, the housing crisis, in Ecuador, the challenge relates to primary shelter and not even housing per se. It was a humbling experience. Some photos to, to demonstrate. Um, Trudy was there and um, there was certainly evidence of connection between planners, between uh, international experiences, between uh, communities, between countries. And there was clearly a common theme around what we were seeking to uh, achieve. Um, this is, um, I titled, All the Presidents. Uh, there's a space for Donald Trump, but I don't think <laughs> we would probably want him to be there. But this was in, in Brisbane, so we've got representations from the Commonwealth, Planners Association, uh, APA, uh, the Institute of Australia, and, and New Zealand. And of course, when you meet, you spend copious amounts of time talking about planning, which can be something which becomes uh, quite thirsty work. <laughs> there I am, I think I've got a glass in my hand, but there I am with uh, Brendan from Australia and, and Bryce from, from New Zealand. I also um, had the chance to witness how good quality urban design has transformed the different in Auckland. And I was made most welcome uh, wherever I went. <clears throat> I just want to perhaps bring it back down to uh, a local level, if I may. Um, when I went to Loch Lomond National Park to meet its hard-working staff, it demonstrated that good planning can be undertaken in many forms <clears throat> and many scales. This photograph shows how careful integration of a physical structure, in this case a small hydroelectric scheme, was crafted into a landscape with dedication and pride by the planning team. I found myself on that site visit being taken um, with some planners, one of whom was hacking his way through the undergrowth just to get to this point. <laughs> and the most important question that he was to put to me was, is the colour of the concrete right? <laughs> there we were in a national park and he felt um, enough passion to spend enough time to make sure that they got it right. And when you look at that uh, from a distance, you really can't see it at all. But it's testimony to the, to the enthusiasm and the passion that I, uh, I experienced. Uh, another example of an integrated landscape solution was when I went to the southwest, but having gone uh, to Plymouth, I came back up through to uh, Stroud and on the M5 uh, motorway services, there is a, an example of uh, some very well crafted um, landscaping. Uh, and you wouldn't believe that that was a motorway services, but it is. And it's also where local produce was sold in an environmentally sustainable way. Travelling on to Yorkshire, um, I found myself uh, in the company of Sir Michael Lyons, uh, with the chair there was Bill Crabtree, and that was extremely stimulating because I think we all know that Sir Michael is quite a renowned expert on, on housing crisis in the UK, and his comments were, were very thought-provoking. So throughout my visits, it's clear that the housing crisis has surfaced uh, wherever I've gone, and I know that it's central to uh, the planning debate. Um, this, some, some of these comments, uh, some of these experiences are slightly surreal. I found myself um, in the Mayor's Parlour in Cork um, when I went to visit Dublin and Cork. Um, the signing of the Lord Mayor's official business book uh, was preceded by a debate with planners as to how they are central to the solution and not creators of the problem. When I went to uh, Wales, Wales uh, Best Places, uh, was Aberaidan in October, and it was particularly pleasing. It, it was a place that I visited in my childhood, and this photo shows how the next generation can thank planners for protecting and enhancing its obvious qualities. 
It's all about legacy. One of the photos shows the value of uh, planning the wards when I was in uh, Rochdale, and it was evident that, that civic pride was enhanced by RTPI recognition. So we must not forget, in my view, how our awards program adds value to the role of planners in a way that communities can cherish. So, to conclude, I've had an unforgettable experience which was prompted not because of who I am as an individual, but of the chain of office I was wearing and the institute I was representing. The RTPI has national and international recognition and we should build on that status in the future with communities and politicians at all levels. I would not have enjoyed the last 12 months without professional and personal support, all of whom happen to be women. I've already mentioned Trudy, but would like to publicly thank um, my Chief Executive at Belfast City Council, Suzanne Wiley, for allowing me the time, uh, to RTPI Suzanne Slack for keeping me on track, to my PA, Paula Cargo, who's been an absolute marvel, and for allowing me to indulge in personal ambition and giving me no, no strife, you guessed it, yes, to Anne, my wife, <laughs> who said much poetry was dead. <laughs> My, uh, my day job as Director of Planning and Place in Belfast, alongside with being President of the RTPI this year, has meant going the extra mile on behalf of the planning profession. I've calculated somewhere in the region, and this includes uh, my weekly trips back and forth to Belfast in excess of 78,000 miles, so I think I deserve a rest after all of that. Uh, but I wouldn't have changed it in, in any way. I feel as if I straggle both hemispheres uh, and here to prove it, I am straddling both hemispheres, <laughs> literally in Quito, with one foot in the northern hemisphere and one in the south. It has been an honour to represent the RTPI, and I have every confidence that the incoming president will make his own significant contribution. So for 2016, thank you for the opportunity. It's been a privilege.